reading is from Revelation, the whole of chapter 4. After this, I looked, and there before me was a door standing open in heaven. And the voice I had first heard speaking to me like a trumpet said, Come up here and I will show you what must take place after this. At once I was in the spirit and there before me was a throne in heaven with someone sitting on it. And the one who sat there had the appearance of Jasper and ruby, a rainbow that shone like an emerald encircled the throne. Surrounding the throne were 24 other thrones and seated on them were 24 elders. They were dressed in white and had crowns of gold on their heads. From the throne came flashes of lightning, rumblings and pearl of thun peals of thunder. In front of the throne, seven lamps were blazing. These are the seven spirits of God. Also, in front of the throne, there was what looked like a sea of glass, clear as crystal. In the centre, around the throne, were four living creatures, and they were covered with eyes in front and in back. The first living creature was like a lion, the second was like an ox, the third had a face like a man, and the fourth was like a flying eagle. Each of the four living creatures had six wings and was covered with eyes all around, even under its wings. Day and night, they never stopped saying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Whenever the living creatures give glory and honour and thanks to him who sits on the throne and who lives for ever and ever, the 24 elders fall down before him who sits on the throne and worship him who lives for ever and ever. They lay their crowns before the throne and say, You are worthy, our Lord and God, to receive glory and honour and power. For you created all things, and by your will they were created and have their being. Thanks be to God for the reading of his word. Amen. Good morning. We continue today with our autumn course on the <coughs> Lord's Prayer. And today we're going to be looking at the last uh, sentence at the bottom of the prayer, which is, Yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Yours is the kingdom. I want to say this morning that God wants his people to come deeper into the kingdom, to know more of his presence, to know more of God's will for the church and for each one of us. He wants us to come out from where we are. God showed me that a lot of God's people are stuck in a box. And the box is locked from the top, or it's a hard cover that's holding you in the box. And God wants us to come out of the box, but to get out of the box is going to be a struggle. It's a difficult thing to get free of where we are in the box. And God wants us to come up from where we have been and where we are into a new uh, place with him, and he wants to draw us into his kingdom. And that's God's purpose for each one of us, that the kingdom that God has is a kingdom which is beyond all our thinking. 
God wants to take us out of the darkness, out of the difficulties and the bondage that we're in and release us into his kingdom. Yours is the kingdom. We're going to be looking at three things this morning, the kingdom, the power and the glory. The last sentence of the Lord's Prayer is not in the original text which Matthew wrote. However, when we say it, it is our acknowledgement of we believe in what we're praying concerning God and his purposes. The disciples speaking to Jesus, Acts chapter 1 verse 6, Lord are, you, <coughs> Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom of Israel? Israel was the kingdom of God in the Old Testament. They were chosen by God. Their, <coughs> their nation was in power and it was a great nation, but they were only great because God chose them. They didn't choose God, but God chose them and they rebelled against the will of God. They disobeyed the laws of God. They went wrong. They went their own way. They, did, they just, dis, just come out from under the blessing of God. They lost what God had given them, and they were dispersed all over the, the world. They call that the <coughs> diaspora. So they blew it, and God scattered them over the earth and they're still scattered but God is taking them back there's a word that says alia which means for a Jewish person to go back to Israel so alia is taking place now and God's kingdom is going to open up something new when Jesus returns the disciples speaking to Jesus Lord are you at this time going to restore the kingdom of Israel? Through disobedience they blew it. I will return, said Jesus. After this I will return and rebuild David's fallen tent. Its ruins I will rebuild and restore it, that the remnant of men may seek the Lord and the Gentiles who bear my name. The Lord will destroy the sinful kingdom on earth. When Jesus comes back, everything that God, that's godless will be destroyed. He will set up his kingdom for a thousand years on earth and all will be peace and ruled by, a, <coughs> by the Lord Jesus Christ. And for those who are not in the kingdom of God, and we're going to be sharing a little bit more about the kingdom of God in a couple of minutes, they will be lost, cut off. And it's imperative, I believe, this morning for you to understand the reality of what is going on here, because God will uh, establish his kingdom, and he's seeking those who are lost to come in to the kingdom. Jesus came and said that I proclaim that the kingdom of God is at hand. For God so loved the world that he wasn't <coughs> that he gave his only son Jesus that whoever believes in him should not perish. I will return. I will restore David's kingdom to the throne of David. When Jesus comes back, he will sit on David's throne and restore the kingdom on earth. That will be Jew and Gentile, the one new man. Jew and Gentile will be together as one new man when Jesus sets up his earthly kingdom. God's kingdom is not a place. A lot of God's people are not sure about the kingdom of God. Some people think the kingdom of God is in the church, or they're not sure where it is. But it's not a physical place 
the kingdom of God comes into our hearts as we receive and enter into a relationship with Jesus Christ. He will come into our hearts, we will let go of the past, we will let go of our old ways within the kingdom, and we will come into a new relationship with God. That is by faith and repentance. We have to come out of the world to come into the kingdom of God. And there are many here who have made that step of faith. It was 50 years ago when I made that decision and I was broken and Jesus came into my heart. I cried out to Jesus for his help. I was lost and hopeless. My life was going nowhere. There was no purpose. It was empty. And everything that I did failed in human terms. And I asked Jesus to come into my heart. And so the first steps of coming into the kingdom of God is to repent and believe and receive Jesus into our lives. And that will bring us out of the box. God's kingdom is eternal. It's beyond all time and space. The kingdom is not a physical place. So when we come into that relationship with Jesus, God cleanses us and brings us into the kingdom of God. It's a spiritual kingdom, and the kingdom of God is here now in the hearts of those who have trusted him. There are those who've already trusted him and gone before in the presence of God. And Jesus is coming back for the bride, those of us who are already in the kingdom. But God wants us to go deeper into his kingdom and understand what his purpose is for you as an individual and collectively for the church. He wants us to grow, develop, understand what his will and purpose is for us, understand as a collective body of God's people where we are going. It's a spiritual relationship that takes us out of the dark world and lifts us into the presence of God. God's kingdom is not a place. God's kingdom is eternal. It's beyond all time and space. Beyond our thinking. Beyond our thinking. How do we enter God's kingdom? Well, I've already spoken about that. Spiritual life begins when we enter the kingdom of God. We then begin to find an ecstatic experience and joy knowing the peace of God. Some of you can relate to this, having put our trust and asked Jesus to come into our life and he releases us from the things of the world and we can sense the presence of God. It's ecstatic to come out of a darkness and hopelessness and come into a deep relationship with God through the power of his Holy Spirit. We experience God's glow and understand and can't really understand it. We become a new creature. All things pass away and all things become new. God is bringing us into that deep relationship with him. On the night that I was turned upside down by the Holy Spirit, Wednesday night on the 20 on, on the 14th of March, 1978 or 79, I was completely turned around and brought into the kingdom of God. Now, the next morning, a person came to the door who I associated with and had been associating with in a godless way. And... He came to the door, I opened the door and he looked at me and he said, John, you've changed. And he was stunned. 
and I couldn't understand, but he said, you've changed, and he just went away. And when I went back into my accommodation or my flat, I began to sense that my forehead was different to what it was. All the, all the lines and the, all the, what would you say, uh, all the heaviness and all the lines on my forehead had just been lifted. God had completely come into the centre of my life and changed me dramatically, permanently, and radically changed. And for 40 years I've been <coughs> following God's purpose for my life. I'm wanting to go deeper into God. I'm wanting to serve him. But when he's in the centre of our lives, we're just a, a, a vessel that he will use. And he makes something out of nothing. He, he chooses the foolish things of the world to confuse the wise. We then discover his power to help us serve him. We begin to want to know what God has got for us in the kingdom. We want to know where he's taking us. Nothing else matters. We want to serve God first and foremost in our lives. There's nothing more greater than knowing God in, in, in our lives and serving him. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added to you. Seek first the kingdom of God. And we've got to let go of the past and come into Christ and become a changed person, radically changed, and become a child of God. Just like being born again, but being born spiritually. I want now to move on to the power of God. Yours is the kingdom and the power. Power means ability to get on with the job. Ability to get on with the job. We live in an age of power. Jet planes, rockets and nuclear warheads. When Samson lost his hair, he became powerless. So the church has been robbed of her power, the Holy Spirit. The church is not what God wants it to be. It's lost its power. There's no power in the church. The Holy Spirit isn't often present in God's church. So the church isn't what God wants, uh, isn't what God wants us to be because we're not moving forward and letting go of the past and we're stuck in those boxes. But God wants to shake the box and help us to get up and move and get on with what he's calling us to do collect individually and collectively. All God's people need his power. We all need the power of God, power to become sons of God. We need the Holy Spirit to continue to be what God's calling us to be and where he wants to take the church. We become attractive when we're filled with the Holy Spirit, when there's a glow on our face and we think of other people and not ourselves, other people's problems, take our eyes off our own issues and our own problems. With God's power, we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Philippians 4, chapter 13. He gives us power to become. God gives us the power to grow in God. The power of the Holy Spirit will help us to grow into a mature uh, child of God. He helps us, he strengthens us, he gives us his power to do what God wants us to do as we commit our lives to him and focus on him. We're not on our own. Jesus said, I'll never leave you or forsake you even to the end of the world. His Holy Spirit comes. It's not just enough to say I'm a Christian and I'm there and that's it. We go on and on within the kingdom of God, receiving what God has got for us. And it's mind-boggling because it goes on to in, into eternity. 
Jesus will take us away and we be, be with him. He gives us power for daily living. Difficulties during the day. Even if you're stood at the sink washing up or doing anything within the kitchen and everything becomes a drab, the Holy Spirit will lift, lift, lift you and strengthen you and give you purpose for the day. In all kinds of ways during the day, in your daily job, it might be umdrum, but with the presence of the Holy Spirit with you, it can be a fulfilling day's work in that sense. Wonderful calling of God, chosen by God. One translation says you were handpicked by God. Handpicked by God. He gives us power to overcome. Every Christian is in a war. We are in a war against dark forces that want to keep you stuffed and in the darkness. He wants to use you as a football and kick you around and make your life miserable. He wants to destroy you. He wants to stop the church moving forward. God's purpose is, it's a battle between light and darkness. Light and darkness. Light overcomes the darkness. So in all that Jesus has done for us on the cross, we have the power to overcome the powers of darkness in his strength. He gives us the power to deal with the devil and the dark forces. And the thing is, once we become a child of God, we become sensitive to the things around us that are not of God. We, we, become dis, we can discern what's of God and what isn't. And we grow in the, in, in the will of God. And so we're recognising what is not of God and what is of God. But if we're not in that place in the kingdom of God, we won't see these things. We'll be, it, it'll be uh, a continuation of being kicked around by the devil and confusing our lives and making it miserable and everlasting hopelessness. God's power. Every Christian is in the war. There's no exceptions. If you're trusting Jesus, you're going to have a battle. But greater is he who is in us than him who is in the world. We start to grow in faith. God has got more for you than what you've got now. We haven't arrived. We will never arrive until we go into the, king, in, into the presence of God. And then we become a new person with a body fit for eternity. God's power is available within us through the Holy Spirit. I want to encourage you, when you pray, you can ask Jesus to fill you with his Holy Spirit and believe that when you ask the Holy Spirit to come into your life, Believe that he's there. It's not so much feeling it at first, but having faith to believe when you ask, he's there with you. And as we praise him and thank him for coming into our lives, so his presence becomes stronger. We start to grow. But we can't grow unless we have the Holy Spirit within our lives. And so God's power is available within us the Holy Spirit. Power to share. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaritan and to the ends of the earth. The word for, <coughs> the word for power is dunamis. Dunamis, which is the word from which we get the English word dynamite the Holy Spirit within us, we have the power like dynamite, child of God. What's different about her? Well, I don't know. I think something's happened to her uh, or him. You become instantly different within your life and you become attractive to people outside and they want to know what it is 
within you which they haven't got. Power to share. Power to share. We could go on all morning talking about going out to do evangelism and sharing with other people, but the power and the wisdom comes from the Holy Spirit when we move in faith. And the more we share our, our faith, the more we want to do it. It becomes addictive. Addictive because we get started and we just want to keep telling people what Jesus has done for us. Power to share. And that's another message, isn't it? Power to share. And finally, and the glory. So it's your kingdom, the power, and the glory. Glory means to give respect or praise. We live in a world of self gratification. I deserve the praise. I did it. Give me the praise. I did it on my own. I've got the ability. We want others to be impressed with what we can do. We want to take the glory. We want to be seen as somebody who is special and and trying to impress other people. We want others to be impressed with all that we do and can do. If life was all about us, we would get all the glory. But life isn't all about us because we're locked into this darkness and we can't see the wood for the trees. But God sees us and knows us and we won't be fulfilled until we come to that place where we can give God all the glory for what he's done in our lives. But life is not about us, it's about other people. In the church, in the body of Christ, helping other people, taking our minds off what we can do, and what I am, and looking to other people to find out how you can help somebody else. And if that happens, then we give the glory to God. He gets the glory, whatever happens. It isn't by our own strength, but in his strength. So we give him the glory. Thank you, Lord, for doing this. Thank you, Lord, for healing me. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. Thank you, Lord, for creating me. Praise God. Praise God, you're mighty to save. A God of love and faithfulness. Psalm 115, verse 1. Not us, O Lord, not us, but to your name be the glory because of your love and faithfulness. This psalm was sung at the Passover celebration meal, Israel's es- celebrating Israel's escape from Egypt. Exodus 11, verse 12. Do we praise God for setting us free? I try to do that all the time in my mind and even in the morning. Thank you, Lord. Without you, I'm nothing. Thank you, Lord, for who I am. Thank you for the life that you've given me. Thank you, Lord, this morning for giving me my soul back. Thank you, Lord, for a wonderful night's sleep. And thank you, Lord, for the gifts that you've given me. Without you, I'm nothing, but with you, I'm everything in Christ. Praise God. Our lives should give glory to God in all that we do and say. Everything that we do is giving glory to God. Without him, we can do nothing. But he wants the glory. And I recognise that each morning when I get up, I praise God for his mighty acts. Worthy are you, Lord, above all gods, Everlasting God, you're worthy of all praise. And as we lift and praise God, so we get lifted up and all the burdens just fall off. And so we become free in the Holy Spirit. Do you want others to respect God? I've often seen, well, not often, but nearly every day, one way or another, I hear somebody say, 
I want to do this, cross fingers. It might happen, will you help me, cross fingers. And I was looking about this cross fingers thing, it's like a, 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 something from the past, it's not of God, it, it's something of darkness. And when I hear somebody saying cross fingers, I almost want to say to them, let it be Lord God. If it's your will, Lord, it'll happen. They don't mention God because they've got no concept of God. Cross fingers, it will happen. And I'm sure you've heard that a lot. Do we want others to respect God? So we've got to share with them the love of God. Try and help them. Get away from cross fingers, Lord, if it's your will. Now I'm going to mention something which is really amazing. About two weeks ago on the local Meridian News, I mentioned this at the prayer meeting, the intercessory prayer meeting. There's a church somewhere on the, on, on the south coast, I can't remember where it was, but there's a lot of youngsters going to the vicar and asking and saying, we want to learn to pray. How do we pray? And I thought this is startling that young people today are seeking the truth. Seeking a, 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 what is it that life is all about. And they're beginning to think that they've got to pray. So I thought that that was amazing on the national news to hear that young children are asking to learn how to pray. Some say it was God who helped me. I give him all the glory. Many gods worship today. Money, self, and myself. Me, me, me. Money, self, football. You could just go on and on and on. The nation is full of false gods in one way or another. But there's only one God above all. When Paul went to Athens and he saw a sign to the unknown God, it, meant, it spoke to me and said that he knew, they knew that there was an un unknown God, but they didn't know him. What is it that's out there? What it, where did I come from? What's the point of this? What am I doing here? We have a sense that within us there's something missing. And they say it's the unknown God, but we won't know him until we receive him into our lives. I wouldn't be where I am today only for God. Forever and ever, amen. God's kingdom will have no end. So when we go into God's kingdom, there is no end. Eternal, it's eternal and forever and forever in the presence of God in the paradise of God, a new creation with a body for eternity in God's eternal kingdom. It just goes on and on and on. Lift up your faith beyond where you are this morning and focus on the eternal presence of God. In conclusion, you are worthy, our Lord and God, to receive glory, honour and power for you created all things, and by your will they were created and have their being. Revelation chapter 4, verse 11. Shall we pray? Lord, we acknowledge this morning that you are the creator God, the eternal living God. We, create, we, we praise you, Lord, that we, we can come into the kingdom of God. We thank you for your love that comes to us when Jesus came uh, speaking and, and, and saying that the kingdom of God is at hand. We acknowledge the kingdom of God this morning, Lord. We were lost, but now we're found, saved and set free. Thank you for the power that comes by your mighty presence into our lives, into the church, the power and the presence of God that comes. Lord, we want you to have your church back. We want your kingdom established. We want your will to be done. We want your ever-abiding presence in our lives and in this church and in Barton and beyond. 
We want to be servants of the living God and give you all the praise and all the glory. Lord, it's so wonderful that you've opened the heavens and come amongst your people and set us free. And so we praise you this morning, Lord, for all that we have in our lives, for all that you've done in the past and all that you will do in the future because there's no end to your love and presence in our lives. No end to your kingdom, an everlasting kingdom from beginning to end. You're the same yesterday and the day and the day and today. Same yesterday and today and forever. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we pray that today each one of us will go out with a fresh vision and purpose to enter deeper into the kingdom and shake off the shackles from the past that's been holding us down in bondage and kicked around by the evil one. Thank you, Lord, for your power and strength. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Now, if anybody.